So let's take a closer look at the season that this woman has had. It's been quite remarkable. Three wins for her. Her first multiple winning season since 2016. 14 top tens, three of those coming in majors. And of course, she has earned herself Rolex Player of the Year for the second time, along with the VAR Trophy as well. So let's talk about our champion because it wasn't a particularly easy day out there. You know, the wind was uh, thrashing Jarena. Conditions were pretty tough. And she went out there ultimately winning wire to wire, came in with the co-lead along Alongside uh, Leona Maguire, and you called it. You said she was going to hold on, and she did, but it wasn't an easy task. Definitely was not easy. The one thing that stuck out to me is yes, she stumbled out the gate and bogeyed the first hole, um, but she did that similarly in the first round, and she bounced back quite nicely. So, hopefully, in her mind, that kind of gave her a sense of relief that. Although she got off to a rough start, she can still finish a round well. Yeah, you're right. I mean, she did bounce back beautifully after that bogey. She made a birdie at the third, made a birdie at the eight. She turned, she was one up. And given the fact that the, the conditions were, were so inclement, right, and Leona McGuire was struggling with her ball striking, it, it almost looked to me like uh, Lydia Ko was like, just don't make any mistakes. You know, find the fairways, find the greens. Uh, and, and then hit these beautiful lag putts, have some great speed. And she did that. You know, if you just were watching the back nine, it was just incredible speed. We know she's a, a marvelous putter, but in terms of not putting any stress on yourself, just sort of lagging it up next to the hole, right? She's disappointed. She didn't make it. But nor did she run it four feet past the hole, have to mark it, go to her pocket. And then the next hole, much longer putt. This was some 45, 50 feet across the green. And again, she's Walking up there, no stress. I mean, there is sort of an element of toil throughout the week that can take a toll on you, especially if your touch is a little off. And the first sign that your nerves are not quite where they need to be are when you have poor touch on the greens. But again, just a fantastic lag right there. So just to back to back to back to back. She's leaving herself with no work, playing pretty much to the fat side of the greens, not really taking any chances, not trying to short side herself. She knew that she was in the driver's seat and that Leona McGuire was going to have to come take this tournament away from her. And again, <clears throat> she finally hits a, a beautiful shot beneath the hole here at the 15th. And I'm sure she's frustrated at this point, but again, it is awfully nice just walking up and having to tap it in. She finally gets one to about 10 feet, and this one gives her the two-shot lead. But, uh, you know, look, we can look at her short game, and we can look at her putting, but the one thing that really had fallen off this year was her driving accuracy. 65% of the fairways was all she had hit all year long. With this drive right here, I, I was leaned in watching this drive for one particular reason. She's played 221 events in her career. She has never hit more fairways than she hit in her entire career than this week, and she did it with that drive. She had previously hit 52 fairways uh, in, in route to winning golf tournaments, in route to playing well, but that was the most fairway she'd ever hit in her career. So her driver came around, as you pointed out earlier in the week, and, and rightfully so, uh, and obviously her putter was there and her short game was brilliant. It's just been a remarkable journey watching Lydia Ko from the moment that she broke out, 2014 Rookie of the Year, 2015 Player of the Year, and she said earlier this week that her mom still jokes about, sometimes she watches her and says, Lydia, you know you were a better player when you were 15 years old, and, and Lydia said, well, mom, what am I meant to do with that? But I think she's certainly proved a point today. And also, there's another important factor to this win, because along with a victory, Player of the Year and the Verde Trophy honours comes three points towards her tally to the LPGA Hall of Fame. 27 points is needed, a number which Lydia is now just two points shy of. It's one of the hardest feats in the women's game. And she touched on how much it would mean to her and what it might take to earn a spot into the Hall of Fame when she spoke to the media on Wednesday. Yeah, I would love to for that sake, but I said, even if I had one point to go, I don't think I'm going to continue to push and push another season and another season just so that in the hope of me grabbing it, um, I don't want to tire myself out uh, when I feel like it is the time for me to retire. I will only know at that time, uh, but I don't want to leave the game in regret of I should have stopped then rather than try and like keep going and going and lose passion for golf. And I do it because I love it and I have the drive and motivation to be the best player I can be. Um, and if I can get those accolades, be in the Hall of Fame alongside some of the, the best and the legendary um, 
players, that would be a huge honor, but I don't want that to be my driving factor. I want to play the best golf I can here this week and whatever happens, like it, it's going to happen. So for me, I think that is my mindset and my goal is that I don't want to get to a point where I no longer want to play because I've tired myself from like trying to grasp it and I have been close and I don't get it anymore. I would rather mm -hmm. retire in the thought of, oh, maybe I could have. And then like, it's still like an exciting thought rather than a tiring thought of, um, I should have done this. At the age of just 25 years old, it's pretty amazing that she's even so close to achieving such a feat, Jarena. I mean, Imbi Park, she's officially the youngest player to be inducted into the Hall of Fame at the age of 27 years of old. That was 2016. But when you think of the LPGA Hall of Fame, you think of the absolute greats, the Arnikas, the Mickey Wrights, the Siri Pats, Lorena Ochoa, Louise Suggs. I mean, for Lydia Ko to be held in the same regard, give us a sense of actually how big of an achievement it has felt across the tour to be able to be eligible for something like that. It's definitely one of the highest honors you can <clears throat> ever hold, um, I believe, um, not just in golf and, like you said, any sport is, is the hardest one to achieve. So um, kind of what I took away from her interview was, you know, she's not out here playing to get that honor. Um, it's kind of like when you, when you tee up for a tournament and you're trying to make the cut, you're usually going to miss it by one or two, <laughs> you know, if, if, that's, if that's your goal, you know, if she... Like she said, she wants to go out there and have fun and, and play as best she can. And when she does that, the results do come. And I, and I definitely see she's in that spot. Right. She's uh, two wins away from, from now making the Hall of Fame. And you think what she just did today, she just got her 19th win, two major championships. That ties her with one of the greats in the game in Sandra Palmer. But when you think about what Sandra Palmer did, you know, she won the title holders by 10 shots. She won the U.S. Open by four shots. She was player of the year in 1975, but she fell short of the Hall of Fame just short of the Hall of Fame. And you start to look at what this great career that Christy Kurz had. She had 20 wins, two major championships, <clears throat> and she fell just short of the Hall of Fame. So, uh, you know, it is an agonizingly hard Hall of Fame uh, to aspire to and to make it to when you look at the PGA Tour. And again, I think one of the beautiful things about having a subjective criteria for the Hall of Fame is that it does bring about debate. Is this person good enough? Is he not good enough? So it keeps their names alive, and you have these wonderful debates, and people love to get into them. The beautiful thing about the objective side, purely objective side, is that the criteria never decays. Like, you're not getting in unless you reach this standard. So it protects the legacies of the greatest players. Uh, the problem with having a Hall of Fame where you put people in every single year is you slowly but surely lessen the criteria to get in the Hall of Fame. And I, and I think that probably rubs some of the greats in the men's game a, a little bit the wrong way. Uh, this is a, an extremely <clears throat> uh, extraordinary uh, accomplishment that she's on the cusp of achieving. And very well, this time next year, we'll be talking about her being in the Hall of Fame. I mean, Lydia Ko has been rewriting the history books since the <clears throat> moment she burst out onto the LPGA Tour. She's an absolute joy to watch. And what she did today, she is uh, continuing to put her name in history in the women's game. Lydia Ko is your CME Group Tour champion.